Hello everyone, we are starting a brand new playthrough, um, that's, this is my old save file at the top here, I'm going to go for a whole new one, mm, so let's make a name, book a drawn, let's see if we can fit all of this in, look, park face, Very good. Ha! Ah. Yeah, that'll do. Fuckatron look. Obviously game developers just don't really consider um, YouTubers with long names. Right. Play. Stand. The ironclad. Uh, as you can see the rest of them are all locked up. Um, and let's have a go at a, uh, an opening run. Act 1, Exordium. Let's have a little look. I think I'm going to try to get this shop, this upgrade, this question mark, here, elite, uh, campfire there, and then this upgrade here. Um, so let's start by going on here. So, tutorial. Um, I know this well, but I'm going to read it anyway for the benefit of anybody who's interested. Defeat enemies by playing cards from your hand. Cards require energy to play. Once you're out, end your turn. At the start of your turn, new cards are drawn and your energy is replenished. Let's just turn the volume down a bit here. Next. Play defensive cards to gain block when enemies are about to attack you. Block reduces incoming attack damage but wears off at the start of your next turn. During your turn, you can observe an enemy's intent above them. If an enemy is intent on attacking you, be sure to gain some block. So we're fighting a cultist here. First thing we're going to do... So I'm going to uh, put it on fast mode. Uh, all the other settings are kind of how I like them. So we're going to use a bash that hits him for eight and uh, puts the vulnerable condition on so that they take half again damage. So that strike card that's normally six becomes nine. I'm going to take the punch in the face for six. Um, and then next round I should be able to kill this cultist very easily. Tip, no more cards. If there are no cards to draw, your discard pile is shuffled into the draw pile. Got it. There we go. And we'll use the bash, eight damage. And the cultist is dead. So I healed six at the end of that fight. I'm going to pick up 17 gold. An explosive potion. Tip, potions. Drink or throw potions during combat. Potions stay with you between rooms. Got it. I'm going to pick up a fresh card. Power cards. This card applies to a, a power to you when used. Powers are passive abilities that remain for the duration of the combat. Well, as nice as that one is, I'm actually going to go for this drop kick. Um, deal 5 damage, and if the enemy has uh, the vulnerable condition, gain an energy and draw one card. Now that will work with my bash card really nicely. So, these three are all about to attack, so I'm just going to block here. Uh, also, there are two of them, not three. Uh, let's use the potion and kill them in one hit. All right, so I've got a few choices here. The Anger card, which I don't like. Deal six damage and add a copy of this card into your discard pile. For me, it just bloats the deck a little bit. Sword Boomerang, deal three damage to a random enemy three times. Or Bloodletting, lose three HP and gain two energy. I'm going to take that. Now I'm going to go for this random one. As you make your way down a long corridor, you see a banana, a donut, and a box floating about. No, upon closer inspection, they're tied to strings coming from holes in the ceiling. There is a quiet cackling from above you as you approach the objects. What do you do? Heal 26 HP. Well, I'm on full, so I don't need that. Max HP plus 5. I don't really want that. So I'm going to obtain a relic and become cursed with the regret card. Tip. Relics. Relics found throughout the spire grant unique bonuses and remain throughout your run. They can be found by defeating powerful foes or within chests. Got it. You grab the box. Inside you find a relic. However, you really craved the donut. You are filled with sadness. 
but mostly regret. And if I look at my cards, I picked up a curse here, the regret card. Unplayable. At the end of your turn, lose hit points equal to the number of cards in your hand. I'm just going to try and get rid of that as quickly as possible. Probably at the shop. Oh, or right here. 50 gold, remove a card from the deck. Okay. The relic I picked up, by the way, is the incense burner. A rare relic. Every six turns, gain one intangible. Um, intangible reduces all damage taken and HP loss to one. The smoke imbues its owner with the spirit of the burned. Hmm. All right. Now, I've got a few things I could buy here, but I'm just going to spend this on the card removal service and remove this strike card. So I'm more likely to get my drop kit come through. And then I want to upgrade. Uh, I actually want to upgrade Bash first. So I get three vulnerable instead of ten and instead of two. Nice. A cracking start. And uh, we'll take the hit of one HP there. Just get started. Uh, and why not? Right, so now I've just got to do nine damage on the next turn. Well, 14. So this one, yeah, I hit, I get another energy, and um, draw a card, and then dead. So, Rupture. Whenever you lose HP from a card, gain one strength. I don't have any cards that take HP off me, but I do want the Headbutt card, so I can keep putting my... Um, I can keep oh, whoops. I can keep reaching in, taking the drop kick card back um, and drawing it out and try and get an infinite cycle. So I'll use Headbutt. Headbutt deals nine damage and you put a card from your discard pile on top of your draw pile. So you can cycle back those powerful cards once you've already played them. Very nice. Right. Frozen egg. Frozen egg, whenever you add a power card into your deck, upgrade it. Very good. Uh, fossilized Helix. Prevent the first time you would lose HP each combat. That's a good one. I always forget I've got it as well. So I think I'm going to die and then I kind of survive. All right. This is nice. So exactly like I said, three vulnerable, drop kick, draw another card, headbutt, take drop kick, put it back at the top of the deck. And it just cycles by cards through that little bit quicker. Um, this enemy is going to hit me for 14, but I've got the uh, fossilized helix, so I won't take any damage on the first hit. And then the incense burn is kicked in, this relic here, um, meaning that the next attack is only going to be one damage. Very good. Let's use this. And dead. Mango. Upon pickup, raise your maximum HP by 14. I'm on 94 hit points now, that's good. And then... Hmm. Although this is a really good block card, um, I don't want the wounds it gives you in my deck. So I'm actually going to go for... Whirlwind. And look at getting it upgraded. Whirlwind... Um, you deal 5 damage to all enemies, and the X represents how much energy you've got left, so you could deal 15 damage if you had 3 energy. And you can stack that with uh, some other buffs to make it really powerful. Now, um, do I want to go to the shop, or do I want to upgrade? I want to upgrade. So let's upgrade the dropkick card. It's just a little bit more powerful now. And because I'm building around constantly bringing that one out, I kind of want to have that more powerful. So, first of all, I'm going to use my potion to buff my defense. 10 blocks. So the first attack from the first one will be blocked, and then the second one won't do any damage. And then let's drop kick here. Drop kick here. The headbutt there, sorry. And then um, we'll have the drop kick coming out, hopefully with the bash. Although, hmm. 
Yeah, let's just do this. Shush, shush, shush. That leaves me on one. I'm going to take seven damage, but I'm going to heal for six. So it'll leave me on 93 at the end of the fight, which I'm more than happy with. There we go. Uh, this is a nice card. Disarm. Um, enemy loses two strength, so it means its attack power is reduced. And on the enemies in Act 2 that have got the multi-attacks, uh, don't hit you for much, but they hit you lots of times, that can be really, really helpful. Alright, so for this one, I'm actually just going to hit both of these for 15. And try, try, try to get them killed at the same time. Because when you kill one... Um, end up uh, making you vulnerable uh, I should get this one on the next round I'm not going to take any damage this first hit there we go dead um, I don't want any of these uh, the cards here are pommel strike deal 9 damage and draw a card. It's a great card, but it's not kind of how I'm building the deck right now. Clothes 9, deal 12 damage and apply 2 weak. Again, a nice card, but it's not how I'm playing. And gain 5 block, deal 5 damage. A great card, but again, not what I want. So I'm going to skip all of those. And uh, don't forget your rewards. Yep. And then... Okay, so for this one, I really want to knock out the ones doing the powerful attacks, so we will bloodlet to get five energy, and we'll do the vulnerable on him, get rid of that guy, bring this out, uh, see what we draw here, play that. And then, oh, wait. there we go. That took a chunk out of them. I'll get hit for four, but I'm going to heal that at the end of the fight anyway, so not too worried about it. Let's just bring his strength down just for kicks. Um, we will kill this guy. Uh, pop that back there. Um, and then we'll take another two damage, which again, we're going to heal up at the end of the fight anyway. Six and four, so he's not going to die. So let's block that. And then on the next round we should be able to get him. Get him good. There we go. 17 gold, a fear potion. Uh, fear potion, apply three vulnerable, and vulnerable creatures take 50% more damage from attacks. Mm, and this is the Reaper card. Deal 4 damage to all enemies. Heal HP equal to unblocked damage. It's a single use card. It exhausts when, once you've used it, but super useful. And then let's get an upgrade here. I'm going to upgrade the headbutt because that's called core to my strategy. And then let's fight a boss. So this boss is the Guardian. Um, he has various forms that he takes, uh, defensive and attacking. It's just a matter, really, of picking the right one at the right time. So I'm going to throw this vulnerable potion on him first. And hit him a couple of times. And what we'll do is try and keep him vulnerable the whole time. Um, so that... I can always use my dropkick ability and keep the cards cycling through. There we go. There's 18 damage there. Um, put that back on the top. Now, I've still got my big damaging hit, so I'm actually just going to block here. Because I kind of want to save that for if uh, he hits me with, a, with something big. So I'm still on full health, so I don't need to use the Reaper just now. Now it's just a matter of cycling through the cards, um, blocking when appropriate, like now, and uh, getting those attacks in. I've managed to not take a single hit yet, but that is about to come to an end. So... There we go. 
Right, so I'm about to get hit for two, which will be nullified, and then another six, which I'll actually take, putting me down to 88. Um, on this beginner difficulty, um, you get all your health back at the end of the boss fight anyway, so it's not too much of an issue. Uh, let's uh, do this, and then this, and uh, I'm prepared to take the one times four. So it's going to hit me for one four times because of the incense burner making me intangible. Um, and then why not let's just heal six here. Use the Reaper. It also gets the Reaper card out of the deck, which is useful. And now I'm just going to start taking the hits now because he's nearly dead. And in fact, he'll be dead next turn. Bye bye, Mr. Guardian. Or Mrs. Guardian, maybe she's a lady. Right, so I've got some gold there, and then I want to add a card to my deck. Now, the Reaper card is nice, but I don't want to have tons of them in the deck. Um, feed is good, but I've got tons of HP already, so I'm going to go for Bludgeon, which is just a nice solid hit. I won't use it much, but when I do use it, it's going to be powerful. Now, I've got the choice of three relics here. Runic Dome. Gain energy at the start of your turn. You can no longer see enemy intents. Um, that's a good one. Philosopher's Stone. Gain energy at the, st at the start of your turn. All enemies start combat with one strength. Um, I can nullify that with the Disarm card, so I'll probably go for that one. And then this one, the Runic Cube. Whenever you lose HP, you draw a card. Um, also useful, but sometimes that can backfire on you if you take HP after if you lose HP after your turn is over, it draws cards and then you lose them. So we'll be going for the Philosopher's Stone this time. And that's mostly because of the difficulty setting. I'm not too worried about getting um, getting hit for an extra one here and there. So I want to go into the shop next. So let's plan our route here. Um, I want to end up on this right side. So get an upgrade here. Um, fight these two elites, or maybe these two elites, depending on how I feel, and I'm going to take this route so that if all this has gone badly, I can veer off this way and go to the shop instead of fighting the elites. But ideally, I want to fight an elite here or here and get this upgrade, and then go this way, and then depending on what condition I'm in here, I'll either fight this elite to get a relic, or go and fight this uh, normal monster here. So I've got a few options, which is nice. We're going to start right there. Now, um, I'm going to get hit for 12. Um, I really feel like my best option here is to just bloodlet. I've got six. Do a bash. Do a strike. And then bludgeon for 48. This guy's nearly dead already. The, uh, the chosen. He's got a weird spell that he casts on you now, but we should get rid of him before that's a problem. And there we go. He's dead. Um, oh, I want another drop kick. That will help me cycle through my cards nicely. Now I'm going to have a look at what's available here. Um, hand drill. Whenever you break an enemy's block, apply two vulnerable. That's really useful with our drop kicks. Um, or every tenth attack you play deals double damage. I'm going to try and I'm going to take this one. I'm going to try and time it with the uh, bludgeon card coming out, and then at the end of your turn, gain four block. Um, an upgraded metallicize, which is going to come in super useful. All right, let's fight these. Okay, so the Philosopher's Stone's really gotten to me here. So first things first, let's get the block on. Uh, then let's do a little headbutt. Yeah, and then block there. So I am going to get hit here for one, which will... Oh no, not because I put my metallicize on. So I'm safe for the moment. Now... Um, by playing this, I'll do four hits, and if you see this little symbol here under the book, whoops, <laughs> there was a symbol saying that if you hit them three times, they collapse to the floor, which is uh, what happened. So now I can just pick them off one by one. Uh, this is a good time to use the Reaper card. If I vulnerabilize that one first. There you go, I'm fully healed. Um, I'm about to uh, get hurt, but I'll heal it all up at the end, so that's fine. Now let's bludgeon this guy. Palm. 
and then hit him. He's about to go back up into the air, but we'll uh, we'll get him on the next uh, next round. So, flack done. All right. Now this is a good card normally, but um, it relies on you having status cards, and I don't have any. I'm not using cards that generate them, so I'm going to skip it for this time. Not this. Not this. So let's just skip. Now, I am confident on being this elite, so I'm going to take the right-hand path and see if I can get some goodies here. Odd. The book seems to be about an ancient named Miao. This piques your interest, but you have a general feeling of malaise. Lose an HP. The ancient, of, uh, the ancient of Resurrection, Niao, was exiled to the bottom of the spire. You feel compelled to read more, but your body begins to ache. Lose two HP. Seeking vengeance, Niao blesses outsiders, using them for her own purposes. You start to feel weak and tired. Lose three HP. There, those resurrected by Niao remember only fragments of their past selves, cursed to fight for eternity. As you near the final page, your old wounds begin to reopen. Open the book. Lose 10 HP. Neil Reese Codex. At the end of the turn, at the end of your turn, you may shuffle one of three random cards into your draw pile. That'll be nice. But I'll only take good ones. As you continue your ascent, thick black smoke begins to billow out of the ground and walls around you, coalescing into three masked forms that start to speak. Another puppet of Nial, I think. Agreed, she always makes the funniest toys. You notice an oversized grin as the third addresses you. Ignore the others. Would you like a taste of power? Receive five apparition and lose 47 max HP. No, I don't want that. How disappointing. You will join us sooner or later. Ha 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 ha. The shapes fade away, leaving only the unnerving laughter of ringing in your ears. Okay. Right, going to get an upgrade here. Uh, let's upgrade bludgeon. So when I do the double damage on that, it'll be 84, and if they're vulnerable, it'll be mm, even more, using maths. We should hopefully have a chance to test it on this. So looking at the pen nib, every tenth attack you play deals double damage. Holding the nib, you can see a, everyone ever slain by the previous owner of the pen, a violent history. So I want to save my attacks for that bludgeoning thing coming out. So let's reduce... The uh, Book of Stabbings attack. Let's give me some extra block. Now, do I want any of these cards? Uh, I think, actually, I might take this drop kick. Okay, so his attack is reduced to one. Um, I really want to start attacking him, so I'm just going to do this. And then... Uh, no, I'm just going to block... Uh, take the three, and then hopefully Bludgeon will come out in a minute. Uh, oh, this is a good card, but I feel like I don't need it right now. Here it is. So, 84, 126. There we go. Boom. And then drop kick for seven. That will give me an extra bit of energy. Drop kick for seven again. Extra energy again. And then headbutt for 18. And the Book of Stabbing is dead. Okay, I got a relic here. Happy Flower. Every three turns, gain an energy. This unceasingly joyous plant is popular novelty amongst... Uh, novelty item, sorry, among nobles. Um, and I don't want any of these cards. Okay, let's fight the Centurion and the Mystic. Now, for this one, even though she's weaker, I prefer to go for the Centurion first. So that's what I'm going to do. Get some block on me there. A bit more block. Okay. Uh, I don't want any of those cards. All right. And she's going to start doing stuff like buffing and healing and all of that. I um, don't want any of these cards. Um, but we can get his health down quicker than she can heal him. And as long as we keep him damaged, um, we're not going to have to worry about... Okay, so here's how I'm going to play this. I'm going to do this card, and then I've got double bludgeon, and this guy's dead. 
and then we're going to put my metallicize on for my extra bit of block. Uh, I don't want any of these cards, no. That Nilwis Codex is actually kind of annoying, but but fine. Mm, let's heal for four, and then a couple of little strikes. Uh, do I want any of these? Nope. All right, good. Going to get a nice cycle going of vulnerability and drop kicks. I'm just keeping my eye on that pen nib. So three more attacks and I'll get a big double one. Don't want any of those. Now we're going to take this one, like I said. Toxic Egg. Toxic Egg. Whenever you add a skill into your deck, upgrade it. That might be useful. Can't see myself adding many skills, but you never know. I've only got 98 money, so I'm not going to bother going to the shop. I'm going to take on this uh, this elite here. So, first things first, let's just... I'm going to take the hit from the, uh, the little gremlin, and I'm going to do a sizable amount of damage to uh, that one. And then I'm going to headbutt him, put the bludgeon back in, Block for five, and then on the next round I'll be able to take out the uh, the uh, gremlin leader with the bludgeon card. There we go, dead. And then the little the little gremlins just run away. Twenty five gold. Letter opener. Letter opener. Every time you play three skills in a single turn, deal five damage to all enemies. Unnaturally sharp. I always forget I've got this, so yeah. Fairy in a bottle. When you would die, heal to 30% of your max HP instead and discard this potion. And then regarding cards. This is good because I can exhaust a card I don't want. And this is good because it draws a card when I use it, so I'm actually going to go for shrug it off. And that will draw out another card for me to use. Plus giving me 11 block. Let's upgrade the drop kick. All right. So the Sneko confuses you and it makes all of your card values change. So let's just, in fact, everything here is rubbish. Let's just hit him for six. Uh, oh, I'll take that. That's quite a good little card. The rage card is free to play and you Oh. Um, and you get block when you attack, basically. So let's just drop all of these. I'm about to get hit for 16, but it'll get absorbed. So that's fine. I'm going to take this Juggernaut card. The Juggernaut card means that you, um, whenever you gain block, you deal 5 damage to a random enemy. We only have one enemy, which is helpful. Um, so I'm going to attack. Uh, put drop kick back in get some blocks, therefore I do 5 damage, and I'm going to attack again, and I get some block, and then did 5 extra damage. Uh, I don't want any of these cards. Alright, so the uh, the instance burn has kicked in. Uh, drop kick, double damage, and unfortunately I can't attack again, otherwise I'd kill him, but I'm only going to take 1 health. Uh, and I've got Metallicize on, so it'll block it anyway. Don't want any of those. And he's down. Bye-bye, Sneko. Okay, uh, Blood for Blood costs one less uh, energy for each time you lose HP this combat, deal 18 damage. Flex gain four strength um, at the end of this turn, lose four strength. Both great cards. Um, I don't want either of them. Not for this run. Okay, what's in the box? 27 gold and a dream catcher. Um, I don't really rest, but dream catcher. Whenever you rest, you may add a card into your deck. The northern tribes would often use dream catchers at night, believing they led to self improvement. We're going to. Uh, we've got full health, 94, so we're going to take on. Um, the, uh, the slaver, the taskmaster, and the other slaver. Now, what I'm going to do is I actually want to take out this one at the back first. 
Very good. I'm going to get pummeled a bit here, but I'll. It's, it's better to just go all out attack with these people than to. Um, to fuss about blocking because they just keep keep attacking you. You just heal later. So that heals me for 12. I'll block there and then I'll yeah, I'll um, hit him. I should be able to get the red one down and dead at the end of it because he's got an annoying move where he throws a net at you and you can't uh, you can't attack. So we'll get rid of him. Draw another card. We'll get rid of this guy. And then because the taskmaster isn't vulnerable, I'm just going to take the hit on the two. Oh, let's get another bludgeon card. So he'll hit me for two. Um, and then I can bludgeon him and kill him. So down to 71 damage, but it can be a lot worse on that one. So ice cream. Energy is now conserved between turns. Blood potion. Heal 20%. Uh, and I don't want any of these cards. So yeah. Heal for 20% of your maximum HP. I'm going to save that for when I'm fighting a boss and potentially losing. Let's get a card upgrade. So I'm going to upgrade, uh, I'm actually going to upgrade a defend. And I'm going to work on those defends. Um, try and just try and get rid of as many strikes as possible, because they're annoying. So I'm going to keep the Reaper for now. Um, and we are going to just attack with the strikes. Uh, I did make an error there, because the pen nib was uh, available. Now, because this is a boss fight, I'm and it's long, I'm taking that demon form card. When it comes out, I'll explain what it does. Definitely want to get the vulnerable on him. Definitely want to get that up. That. Right, so we've blocked his first attack. Uh, I don't want any of those just now. Actually... So I can afford to take one big hit from this guy because he's um, because I've got my fossilized helix in play. Um, so this will be the hit I take. Not that big actually, but if it's looking peaky, I can just heal up. Oh, I definitely want this metallicized just to boost my end of turn block from four to seven. Right. So this card, at the start of your turn, gain two strength. Once I play it, every turn my strength goes up by two. As you can see here, the boss has got strength one at the moment. And that just adds a point to every attack that you make. Um, super handy. Mm, I don't want any of these. Right, so we're blocking as much as we can here. I'll still take one hit there, but that's fine. Um, and what I really want to try and do now is get some vulnerables, the vulnerables out. Um, my next attack deals double. Um, don't want any of those. So I should hopefully be able to play that bludgeon card. Sixty-nine damage. Crash. Um, and then I'm going to bloodlet. Uh, play that one, that one, and that one, uh, and then pretty soon I might actually use that uh, that blood potion card. I've taken the inflame card, which just boosts my strength by two, which will stack up with that uh, with that demon card very nicely. Um, let's play this, pull something out. Let's use this to heal for eighteen. Very nice. Um, and then let's attack here. And what we're trying to do now is build up um, this relic, the pen nib. Every tenth attack you play deals double damage. As you can see, it's currently on five. Um, oh, these cards are all good, but I don't want any of them. Because I've got a strategy, and my strategy is surrounding that bludgeoning, that bludgeon card. So I'm about to get absolutely smacked down, so... Let's get some vulnerable on him, and then let's just defend, and then I'll just hit with that one. 
Uh, don't want any of these. Now, where am I at with attacks? First of all, I want to block and see if I can pull out another attack. I'm on seven, eight, nine. Okay, let's do this and see if we can pull out another attack. And then let's do this to put the drop kick back at the top of the deck. And then. Ah, okay. Yeah, I made an error there, but I'm going to survive it, so it's fine. Oh no, it's fine. Because of the um, the demon card, I actually got enough to kill him. Straight off. Um, what do I want to take from this? This Juggernaut card is actually quite handy. This will then be my 20th card for my deck. And that will mean that when I use the Metallicize at the end of each round, um, I'll do a little bit of damage at the time. Which is going to come in useful. Um... Slaver's Collar. During boss and elite combats, gain energy at the start of your turn. Black Star. Elites drop an additional relic when defeated. I would only take that if it was the first one I got on the first elite fight. And the little house, or the tiny house, sorry. Upon pickup, obtain one potion. Gain 50 gold. Raise your match HP by 5. Obtain a card. Upgrade a random card. Sometimes that's good. Not this time. This time I'm taking the Slaver's Collar. The reason I'm taking that is so that when Whirlwind comes out, if I've got loads of leftover energy from um, having the ice cream relic, I can just do a huge attack that absolutely trashes everything. So let's plan our path here. Um, we want to be catching this upgrade and this upgrade. So we'll be fighting this elite. I want to get this upgrade and I want to go to the shop because I've got 300 gold. So we're going to start here and go up that right hand side and then veer over into the middle. So. Let's get some block on. Let's reduce your strength. Uh, I'm going to get attacked whether I block or not here. I'm going to get hurt. So I really want to concentrate on killing the Exploder. Because when it explodes, it does its full HP damage amount on you. Which can be really, really frustrating. I decided not to take any of those three cards. They're all quite good, but not, not how I'm playing it right now. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to get hit back here, but I'm also going to kill these all instantly, I think. So. That didn't quite go how I meant for it to go, so let's just heal up. Whoops. I actually thought by playing that card I'd only take 5 damage, not um, 35. But there you go. Right, don't want any of these. And then I'm going to block, and then bludgeon, and that one's dead. Yeah, I'm already back up to 80 anyway, so we're fine. These are all pretty good cards. Well, not this one. This one's trash, but um, I don't want them. Okay. So the Darklings, they all have to be killed at the same time. Um, otherwise, they wait a turn and come back to life. Oh, it's another Juggernaut card. So I don't really focus too heavily on um, killing any one of these quickly, even though they're doing heavy attacks. I try and whittle them all down, and if I can, kill them all in the same turn. Um, it's rare it actually goes down that way, but we'll see. Right, I can use this Reaper to heal to full health. And then this Darkling in the middle is nearly ready to die. Uh, this is a great card. I would take it if it was permanent, but because of the way I'm playing this battle, um, it would just get in the way. If it ever comes up in a run, I'll just explain what it does. Um, let's kill you. And you. Done. Right, 12 gold and um, yeah, this is a great card, but again, doesn't really match with the deck I'm building. I have built, so I'm, uh, I'm not going to go for it. My deck of 20 cards is, is pretty solid. Okay, so the Transient, all you have to do is survive five rounds. Um, 
here we go, look, uh, dies in five turns, but it gets stronger and stronger each time. However, every time you hit it, its uh, attack power goes down. So I'm going to throw almost everything I've got at it. Uh, I'm going to block that. And I'm also going to throw this weak potion on it as well. So. I would normally take demon form, except it just takes too long to build, and all I need to do is kind of survive. So I'm going to um, skip for now. Okay, so he's about to do 30. So what I really want to do is, first of all, I'm going to block 11 of it. Um, and then hit him there. Uh, block again. The block is kind of doubled because it's also damaging him, and then yeah, he's now below my, my block level. Um, gonna avoid those cards. Okay, now he's doing one damage because of my incense burner. Let's disarm him and uh, just chuck some attacks in for no reason. I have actually killed this monster before, but um, you really have to be set up to do that well before you reach it. Alright, here we go, we've got a cheeky bludgeon here. So first things first, let's make you vulnerable. Let's do 60-something damage. And now he's not going to do any damage at all. Mm, I don't want any of those. And then this is the big one. So let's see what we draw out here. Absolute trash. So headbutt. No, it doesn't really matter what I take because he's dead this turn. Uh, double attack and I have managed to do that fight without getting hit even once which I'm very very pleased with 10 gold, a skill potion and um, I am actually going to take this ghostly armour it's ethereal, if this card is in your hand at the end of your turn it is exhausted, exhausted cards are removed from your deck until the end of combat and then it gives me 13 block if I play it, so if I don't play it I lose it basically Alright, we've got 400, no, we've got 339 to spend. Um, the Abacus, whenever you shuffle your draw pile, gain 6 block, yes please. And then let's remove a strike card. Puts me back down to a deck of 20. Um, and I think I will take Liquid Memories. Choose a card in your discard pile and return it to your hand. It costs 0 this turn. Alright. What to do, what to do. First of all, I'm blocking that 8 damage. Second of all, uh, I'm going to bludgeon the heck out of this guy. And then I'm going to use my liquid memories and just get him out of the fight altogether. There we go. Now I can afford to be super careful because these spikers don't really... What are they called? Uh, Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I just meant to look at the name. The spikers don't really attack you for much. Um, that was a silly error. All I was doing was looking at the name and I attacked it. Um, but once I've got the Juggernaut card in play, I can just keep blocking and that'll damage them without without me taking any uh, repercussion. It just means you have to play a little bit more patiently, you know? Okay, blocking. And then I think I'll just punch you. And then when I finish the round, there we go. And I'm back to full health again. Um, I like this card, but just because of the way... I've got everything set up. What I don't want is for the the feature of this one where you cannot draw additional cards this turn to um, conflict with the dropkick skill. So I'm going to leave that leave that out of there. Let's upgrade something. Uh, I think I'm going to upgrade this defend card. And then I want to uh, I want to be here. So I'm going to take the left fork. Now I've got two exploders here, it's essential that I get them out of the fight. So 
So we're going to start by knocking down this first one. Uh, bit of block there. Right, you're done. I could have actually used that bludgeon card on the one at the back because it would have killed it in one hit, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't stop to think. So let's. Oh, he, so he's about to die. So let's see if I get a block card here. There's all still non-attack cards in your hand. Yeah, I'm going to just take the 15 block there. Um, and then I've got six on Whirlwind. Okay, nice. And then one those. And that's done. All right. Now, this would be good. Having a nice chunky load of block is, is pretty helpful. So, um, jutting from the chaotic terrain around you, a bony sphere surrounds a mysterious glowing object within. While you are curious what lies inside, you notice some sentries keeping an eye on it. Uh, I'm going to fight and see if I can beat them. Right, first things first. Let's uh, do this and see if we get anything fun out. No. Let's reduce your strength. Uh, I think I'm going to want this bludgeon card, actually. So they're burning me each turn, which is very rude. Um, let's pick on the weakest one here. Um, my incense burn has kicked in, reducing their attacks to one. Uh, let's do that. Uh, like that. So the first attack is going to nullify my fossilized helix. Uh, the second attack is going to hurt me for 20. Not good. However, if I can get rid of you, I can block there. I can do that. Block again. And attack. So I could potentially get rid of this guy on the next, uh, the next draw. Let's try it. Bosh. Bosh. Bosh, done. And so 47 gold and Sharon's Ashes. Sharon's Ashes, whenever you exhaust a card, deal three damage to all enemies. Now I don't really have any exhaustion cards, but um, sometimes you get dazed and when the dazed card exhausts, uh, that counts as well. So it's just a little one to have in the pocket. If you get that Sharon's Ashes early, you can really, really make it work for you. Uh, Red Skull, while your HP is at below 50%, you have additional three strength. That will tie in nicely with my Whirlwind card. All right. Speaking of my Whirlwind card, maybe it's time to upgrade it. Yeah, go on. It's done us well so far. Now, I've got three potions, and I definitely want to think about using a couple of them uh, for this fight. So the way this fight works is the more cards you play, um, this slow condition uh, builds up. Whenever you play a card, Giant Head receives 10% more damage from attacks this turn. Receives 10% more damage. So, what I want to do is play my non-attack cards first. Like my blocks. Um, and then my final thing wants to be the attack. So, I want the Vulnerable Iron. That's a priority over and above the Bludgeon. And do that. None of those, please. Okay, so he's taken away my, my null condition. So let's block, block, block. I'll do the drop kick now to see what I pull out, because I've got three. And then we'll use Whirlwind on him, which is doubled and vulnerable. And it's doubled because of the pen nib relic. And there we go. A nice solid 100 damage. I'm going to take the Inflame just to build my strength slightly. Uh, there we go. Now, he's going to attack me for one, so let's do a block. Let's do a drop kick to uh, get another card. Now, I could play Reaper here, get a bit of healing, or I could do Juggernaut, which I think long term is going to benefit me more, because every time I block, he'll take a little bit of damage as well. So let's do that. Uh, I'm going to take... 
the drop kick because they're just like a free card essentially as long as the vulnerable is in play and the vulnerable has just gone which is kind of annoying okay so we're going to drop kick drop kick headbutt put the drop kick back in place and uh, just keep hoping for um, that bash card to come out it has not that is pretty annoying so now I really want to use my bludgeon card the first thing I'm going to do is use my block potion to nullify some of that 29 punch smack bludgeon now I already want to be mindful of this the pen nib because um, I've got two more attacks and it gets the double damage feature um, all right, now he's starting to punch hard, so let's just block, block, block. Let's use this for the two. And now my next attack is doubled, so hopefully it will be bludgeon. Potentially I could pull it out here. Nope. Well, that is disappointing. But I can't afford to sit on my laurels, so let's get the vulnerable back in play. Let's block here. Um, and then I think I want to heal. So we'll get 17 health back off this. And the Sharon's Ashes kicked in there because um, the Reaper card exhausts when you use it. And then, uh, no, let's just skip those. I should be able to get him sorted on the next turn because I've got all these drop kicks. Uh, that's Bloodlet, and then Whirlwind away! Dead. Cool. Strawberry, upon pickup, raise your max HP by 7. I'm now on 101 HP. I uh, don't want any of these cards. And then uh, I'm actually going to, believe it or not, heal. Which gives me the option for more cards. Uh, I don't want any of those. Um, I got the option for more cards because I had the Dreamcatcher Relic. Now I want to see what's here. Whenever you go into a shop, you see he'll 15 HP. There are now no shops ahead of me. Um, now I've got a chance here. There's a possibility that this one is hard to kill. This is a re uh, this is an elite, and I think it's going to be the um, monster. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Um, what's she called? Oh no, it was not the one I thought. This is the Reptomancer. And what you have to do with her is uh, get rid of these daggers because they start doing devastating damage and then kind of will her down as you go. So, first things first, we'll block those two one strikes. We'll pop this on her um, and then we will just attack. So they're dead. She's going to summon another one in a minute. I don't want any of those. But we're going to try and keep knocking out each one as it comes down and then, um, and then doing the rest of the damage on her. So... Do that, get a bit of healing, and then we will do this on her, um, and then heal there because I can't knock uh, can't knock the dagger out of the fight. Okay, I'm going to get hurt here, but that's okay. Let's play Juggernaut this, and then. Oh no, ouch, ouch, I'm now on 28 health. And that's how quickly she can uh, she can dismantle you. Uh, let's... Okay, so I accidentally wasted my pen nib there. I could have held on to that for a bludgeon, but I'm pretty confident we're going to get her this time. There we go. Ooh. So I'm now on 34 health. Pair, a bond pick up, raise your max HP by 10. My max HP is 111, but I'm only on 44. Um, I... I'm actually going to take this. And then I'm going to heal here. Now, fortunately, the... Uh -oh. uh, let's take a couple of these. Um, unfortunately, 
oh sorry fortunately the awakened one uh, responds negatively to you if you use power cards but fortunately i don't have much in the way of power cards going on so it should be fine first things first let's use my ethereal card here then we want to just look at knocking out the uh, the cultists really i'm saving my intimidate card apply two weak to all enemies that makes their attacks a bit weaker i'm going to do that once the cultists have started actually uh, attacking. Um, gonna skip those cards for now. I'm really relying just on the bludgeon cards to come out. I'll disarm you, uh, punch these two, um, and unfortunately I can't block so I'm actually gonna lose my damage immunity uh, just from taking one it. That is a shame. Now, I've got a couple of power cards here I could risk playing. That's a really good one. That's a really good one. And do you see that its strength has gone up? Um, if you look at the strength thing here. Ooh, if you look at the bottom of this pop-up menu, uh, strength increased by one because I played a power card. Now, we're going to uh, heal up a bit by using Reaper. Uh, we're going to kill this one, block that incoming damage, and I'm going to take Shockwave actually, that's going to come in a bit handy on the actual boss. There we go. Very nice. I really want to get these cultists dead. So let's defend and defend again. Uh, now, I'm not going to take the Juggernaut, just because I don't want to be boosting the uh, Awakened One's strength. Because once I beat it, all its health comes back again anyway. Uh, right, this is doubled and it's vulnerable, so that's 126 damage. Thank you very much. And let's do a little attack there as well. Now I just want to build back around to that double attack thing. Um, use the Bludgeon again and I'm laughing, really. Defend, defend. So that's one, two attacks. I'm now on three on the uh, pen nib. Cool. Now, oh, unfortunately, the awakened one doesn't have a vulnerable anymore. And um, so these are just straight up normal attacks. Uh, looks like bludgeon. Is, uh, looks like um, bash is coming back around again, so I can do the vulnerable again. I uh, don't want these. Alright, so I'm below 50% health now, so I get an extra bit of strength. Um, I can just do this once, kill him. And now I... sit pretty while he... gets more powerful. See, he's growing spikes. So this move... I don't know what I did then. Awakened one. Uh, 300. So this move, yeah, um, he's doing is like Dark Echo or something, and that can hurt you quite a bit. But now I'm free to use all my power cards, so if I get some cool power cards popping up at the end of the fight... Um... Ah, now I'm not going to use this strike card, because my pen nib is on double. So let's uh, let him do his worst. 22... I've got 11. Oh, this is good. Okay. So first of all, I'm actually just going to block. There. Now I've got 9 times 22. So what's that? That's quite a lot. Let's just do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. He's nearly dead. Very good. Yeah, all I need is one bludgeon card to come out now. And, I am, uh, and I've beaten it. I don't even care about getting hit anymore. There we go. His own Void card killed him, look. So, I've beaten the final boss. Proceed. Thump, thump, thump. A deep, pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this evil? Continue. You ready your blade. Attack. 
You deal 890 damage. The heart squirms and bleeds, but is ultimately still pounding. Are your mightiest attacks not enough? Continue. You ask yourself, have I been here before? You feel you have dealt a total of 42,168 damage to the heart. The heart pulses louder and louder as your consciousness fades. So I guess it's adding up my damage from my other save file as well, which I've got up to like Ascension 20 or something. Victory? Question mark. Continue. So Ascension unlocked. Uh, floors climbed, 255. Enemies slain, 15. Exordium elites killed, 1. City elites killed, 3. Beyond elites killed, 2. Bosses slain, 3. Speedster, 25. Stuffed. I don't actually know what that one means. Maybe it's a healing thing. Champion, 3. Overkill, 25. And then um, I've unlocked some new cards. Heavy Blade, deal 14 damage. Strength affects this card three times. Spot Weakness, if the enemy intends to attack, you gain three strength. And Limit Break, double your strength. Um, cool. Proceed. New character, the Silent. She's a stabby poisoner. Um, and I've watched this credit sequence many times, so we're going to be skipping past it. Um... There we go. Um, and I have got the uh, the crystal sapphire ruby thing for the ironclad, and I now I just have to uh, beat the boss with the silent. Um, so yeah, that was my uh, Slay the Spire start up brand new save file thing. Um, if you enjoyed that, please uh, consider leaving me a like, and I have various uh, other videos on here. And uh, leave me a comment if there's anything that you'd like to see. Uh, but above all, thanks for watching and see you again.